where and how does stress happen? That's the first question. Stress happens only and exclusively in our heads and in our brains. That is just for sure. Because, you know, if that would not be true, we would all go to the cinema, face the same situation and react always completely alike. For those who are not familiar, um, you may be joined um, because of our um, work on Instagram or LinkedIn. Um, we are all about unleashing your full potential, at least helping you to unleash your full potential. We do that with individuals as well as with corporates. So for individuals, it's all about sports, it's nutrition, it's your business, it's your personality personality but even also your full potential that you have as a human being or also as a parent let's say um, for the corporates it's the same thing um, we're gonna help you and your employee to unleash your full potential in business in sports in your health in your mental ability and everything how do we do it we do it online through uh, online sports to webinars to um, to workshops and everything like that. We also have interviews where we talk with business leaders and sports stars and, and entrepreneurs. And then when it comes to corporate health, we also work on site where we just can um, do sports on site. We can do uh, workshops and everything with experts, just like um, Stefan. Very important for today, this, this webinars, it's just for you. We will not make any money of it, really not. Like Stefan will not get a cent of it. I will not get a cent of it. However, if you liked it, if you liked the webinar and you really think that this provide any value to you, you can donate money and that donation will go one-on-one -on -one to Summits for Hope, which is a charity organization in Zurich that works with um, um, different organizations down in Africa. So no money comes to us, it will all go down for uh, the charity, it's all donation. So that's about it for all out. Um, Stefan, I'm very, very happy to have you here. You're gonna talk about burnout, um, especially in that time of Corona, and also about the positive aspects of Corona. And maybe you will talk about your, your backyard and about your, your cooking skills and everything. So. It's up to you, Stefan. It's your show. Let's take over. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, so first of all, and very important to understand, my backyard is much better than my cooking skills. So uh, <laughs> that just to, be, to, 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 to clarify that. So first of all, thank you very much, Chris, uh, for the invitation. I'm really happy you know, to spend the next hour or so uh, together with you guys. Um, if Chris says, you know, we should think about the positive of Corona, um, I don't want to be ignorant or I don't want to make something that is really big, in my opinion, and that we should take very serious. I don't want to uh, put that, you know, in a way that it might give the impression, you know, that I'm not taking that serious. But still, I believe, you know, that uh, Corona, as it is, you know, has as well some positives. At least it has some positives, uh, basically, for me. This is basically the picture, you know, that, that I see every morning, you know, when I get up, I need to check uh, the dashboard, you know, for my own interest, but as well in the light of uh, the role that I have. Um, and with that, I would like to just quickly introduce myself. So... My name is Stefan Tropic. Um, I'm uh, soon going to turn 55, so I feel terribly old, I have to admit. You know, if I, uh, if I introduce myself saying that I'm 55 years old, this sounds so terribly old. But the good news is that I'm not feeling that old. 
Um, I'm, I have, uh, I'm married with uh, Coro. We have been married since 18 years. We have two kids. Kids age, my son Nicholas is 18. My daughter Jill, she is uh, 15 years old. And uh, you know, if life at business is not uh, kind of uh, challenging enough, we do have some minor challenges back home with the kids. If you have two kids with puberty, I would say it's, um, it's, it's tough, but it's on the, on the, at the same time, it's as well really good. Um, I consider myself to be really a sound HR leader, you know, in, uh, in different industries. I would say that over the past 20 years until I joined uh, Bauman Springs, I have been working in big, in big corporates. The last seven years I spent that with, uh, with Dell, you know, where I used to work together with Stefan Züger, who is on this call as well. Um, before that, you know, working with companies such as uh, Thomson Reuters with a, with a significant importance with private banks. So that is basically my, um, my professional background. In terms of um, kind of uh, education, I, um, I'm a certified burnout prevention coach and I'm as well a certified business coach. Um, just quickly touching on the certified burnout prevention coach. As it says, I'm allowed and able to accompany people who are still healthy in the sense that they are not yet suffering a burnout. If they are already suffering a burnout, I, uh, I, I always need to kind of pass them on to professionals, you know, with the psychology, uh, psychological uh, background. So I'm only working with people that have the impression, you know, that they are not really on a good track in life, but they're still able, you know, to take decisions on their own. And they're, for example, as well, not suffering any kind um, of depression. In my former life, I used to be as well an extreme uh, endurance athlete. I have done like 15 Ironman. I was a participant Ironman Hawaii in 2006. Uh, I was an ultra marathon runner, did, did 100 kilometer runs, long distance swimmer, you know, like 27 kilometer swimming. So, but I stopped doing that um, roughly, I would say six, seven years ago, because all of a sudden I noticed that uh, the element of performance, you know, is already quite prominently represented in my business life. So I figured out that in my private life, I probably need to take it a little bit, a little bit easier. Since March uh, 2019, I uh, took the conscious de decision to get out of the big corporate world when leaving Dell. And I joined a company called Baumann Group. And uh, Baumann Group is, is, is a primary is a supplier for the automotive industry. And as you can imagine, the situation with the automotive industry it's really, really a delicate one. Um, I think that uh, if many companies are suffering of Corona, um, if you're working in the automotive industry, you're not only suffering Corona, but you're as well suffering um, the automotive industry. I'm always saying that the automotive industry is not in a really bad shape. The automotive industry at this moment in time is basically dead. Nothing is going on in Switzerland, April 2020, compared to April 19, minus 70% car sales. Um, and um, I mean, I'm fully aware about the fact that Switzerland is not representative, you know, for the global car market. On one hand, on the other hand, if you see as well declining sales um, in, in, in China and some other of the emerging markets, this is probably truly uh, slightly concerning. So in the light of that, I have a question for you because we will be talking about stress, you know, in the next uh, 60 minutes. So what do you think what my stress level is on a scale from one to 10? 10 being extremely stressed and one being, you know, not really too much concerned. And again, I'm 55 years old. I'm married with two kids, 15 and 18 years old. What do you think? How stressed am I?
So Tiger, who is a friend of mine that I know, you know, he says seven, Chris says eight, Francesca says seven. Charles, your guess? Eight. Daniela, six. Okay. So everybody is, uh, is, is quite high. I'm going to disclose this um, at a later stage towards the end of the presentation, but um, it's uh, good to see. Thank you for that. So before um, Eva says seven, okay, good. So before we go uh, on the question of the positive or the negative of uh, Corona, I would need to have somebody volunteering to answer very, very briefly, just five questions. Charles, would you volunteer to do that for me? Okay, so um, could you just go on, uh, on, uh, on mute your microphone and uh, give me the answer to, to the questions that I'm just gonna bring if possible. Okay, oh shit. <laughs> so the first one you already decide, how many girls in countries with low income can visit elementary school? What do you think? How, how many what? How many girls? in countries with low income can visit elementary school? 20, 40, or 60%? Uh, so 20%? 20%. The next question is, where does the majority of today's world population live? In countries with low per head income, with medium per head income, or with higher? per head income? I would say low. Low. So A as well. Then the third question is, in the last 20 years, the share of people living in extreme poverty has A, almost doubled, B, not changed or only insignificantly changed, or C, clear more than halved? I would say doubled. I feel like things might be getting worse. <laughs> okay. Question four. How many people on earth have a certain access to electricity? 20, 50, or 80%? I would say 50. 50. And the last question. How many of the one-year-old kids on earth are vaccinated against any kind of diseases? 20, 50, or 80 percent? I would say 50. 50. Okay. Charles, I have a good news for you and I have a bad news for you. Which one do uh, you want to hear, hear first? Let's do the bad news first. The bad news first. All your answers were completely wrong. <laughs> All right. But you want to hear the good news as well? Sure. You performed at the exact same level as I did when I saw the questions for the first time. So huh. here, what you see in green are the right answers. Wait a second. I think, no, you did actually. No, I think all your answers were wrong, right? Yeah, they were. So these questions, by the way, is, does any of you know the book Factfulness from Hans Rosling? If you do not know it, to me, it has been the most eye-opening book that I have ever read in my whole life. Because what Hans Rosling does is in his book, he explains why we see the world much more negative than what it is. It's an absolutely fantastic book and I can only recommend you to buy it. You know, and obviously it's available, you know, in German, it's available in English, it's available in all the questions, in, in all the languages. So the question that I have to you is, basically I have two questions. The first question is, 
why do we see the world so much worse than what it really is? What do you think? What are your guesses? Unmute your microphone if you have an answer for that. I go, I go, I go for media. Uh, too, too much media and, and everything is negative because negative just sells better than positive. Exactly. To, uh, Stefan Zügel says too much newspapers. Yeah, newspapers or social media. You know, the question is, if you think about yourself, what is the kind of news that you really want to read? If uh, somebody would send out the message tomorrow that uh, on today, you know, on May 11, we have had over the globe, uh, over the entire globe, we have had 528,963 flights, which at this moment in time is not very realistic, but uh, they all arrived in time and they all arrived without any major problems. What would you think if you would get that message? You would think, what the hell? You know, I mean, wh why are they communicating that, right? But if just one plane comes down, you know, we, we see it all over, you know, in the news, which by the way, leads to the fact that some people indeed believe that flying is dangerous. And uh, if you fear to fly, you should probably never ever sit in a car because uh, the risk that you die in a car crash is significantly higher than uh, if you if you that you would die basically in a in a plane crash. Oh, hello, Paul! Great to have you on the call as well. Some really old friends showing up. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Then I'm going to show you a very quick and brief video. It will last not longer than 90 seconds, and I would like to ask you to look at this video in the light of what is happening to you personally in terms of stress if you look at this video, okay? 90 seconds. You know, if you Google burnout and stress, you know, this does not come up, but I saw it and I figured, you know, it's such a fantastic and great, uh, great uh, commercial. So may I ask, who of you would not have sat down in the cinema in this situation? Please unmute your mic if you if you would not have sat down. So this means that everybody would have sat down. Is that is my understanding correct? Yeah, Stefan, I can't imagine. You know, I paid for two tickets, 
I okay. wanted to see the movie with my wife. I can't imagine leaving just because there are all these guys in the cinema. Okay. What do you mean with all these guys? All, you know, all those, um, all those ro hard rocking fellows with tattoos and yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the ones that we saw on, on, on sitting in, in, in the chair. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, Chris, Chris says, I would have sit down only with Francesco. So the question goes, uh, goes actually, you know, to Francesco. Francesca, if you would have entered the room, the cinema yeah. with Chris, would you have sat down? Um, I would have sat down because as long as they are not staring at me in a bad way, why should I be judgmental? But still, um, I'm used to, I think, cover the bad boys. So, yeah, <laughs> would, I would allow Chris to sit next to me. It's okay. <laughs> and if you would have gone on your own alone to the cinema? Still, I'm not scared of those boys as long as they... Okay. May I ask you, why are you not scared of those boys? Because, I mean, 148 of those boys sitting in the cinema, you the only female entering the cinema. Why the hell are you not scared? Never got attacked or been in a bad situation with those guys. They just look or might look bad at their appearance, but that's, that's just all that there is. It's just... Um, it's just the outside. It's a shell. It's uh, this is what I mean by not being judgmental. I think yeah, I would be so more good. scared about those that look like um, very happy and comfortable. Those are most of the time the bad guys. So, <laughs> well, you're touching on a really very interesting point because this is exactly it, you know. And I'm bringing now a really ugly example, but if I'm asking you, you know, where child abuse mostly happens, you know, it's usually it's not the rockers. You know, yeah. it's within the closest family those, that those kind of things happen. And um, I remember it's probably back, I don't know, three and a half, four years in Switzerland when a guy murdered uh, an entire family with, uh, with four members, you know, kind of uh, the mother of the two kids. He abused one of the kids, you know, physically because before he killed them. And this guy was just a very normal guy. And after he had committed that crime, he lived happily 500 meters away, you know, from, from the place where he killed all those people. He was incredibly good, um, uh, kind of uh, embedded, you know, in the society. If you would go to a cinema, you know, and he would be sitting there, you probably, without any doubt, you would have sat down, you know? Yeah. And this is basically what you have been referring to, Francesca. We usually, as people, we usually have a tendency to judge people based on their appearance. And, you know, we do that in the negative or we do that in the positive. I mean, whenever I have shown this video, Many people have been saying, well, you know, I'm not going to sit down with these guys. They are dangerous. They drink a lot of alcohol. Um, they take drugs. They are violent. You know, they are all these kind of things, you know, that, you know, if you, if you see uh, people uh, dressed up like, like they are. And this is what people usually perceive about those people. And there is only one word to that judgment. It's bullshit. You know, and the really funny thing is, or it's not funny, but it's just a matter of fact that even people who have never had a bad experience with those kind of people, they are judgmental, you know, they are negatively biased. They believe that if they sit down, you know, something really, really bad will happen, you know, without knowing those people at all, without having had any bad experience with those kind of people. Any comments on this? Any disagreement? By the way, I love it if you disagree with me, guys. I really like it if you disagree. Any comments on this one? Good. So, 
let's go a little bit in in theory when it uh, when it comes to stress so the question that i have for you is where and how does stress happen that's the first question where and how does stress happen Uh, I feel stressed when I'm overwhelmed by a situation, mm -hmm. either by the volume of impressions that's raining down of me, the volume of requests that are being placed on my desk, or um, if a situation is so unfamiliar to me that, you know, I cannot handle it from, from a certain routine position, that's mm -hmm. the stuff that stresses me. Well, important is you believe that you cannot handle it, right? Yes, because I, you know, it's a little bit like, like the cinema scene before. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, as soon as the, the level of unfamiliarity increases the level of confidence that I can handle the situation because I handled it before, I think then it gets difficult, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Paul wrote down that stress only happens in our mind. And this is really what it is all about. Stress happens only and exclusively in our heads and in our brains. That is just for sure. Because, you know, if that would not be true, we would all go to the cinema, face the same situation and react always completely alike you know and this is by the way something that you see in business as well 50 people in exactly the same situation you see 50 completely different reactions so the learning out of that is that stress is not related to concrete situations but stress is related to my individual perception that i have about the situation and um, stress is always an event in the future where we, we give the event a negative evaluation it's always an event in the future and Stefan could we just stick with the example that you just brought by being overwhelmed would you agree that this definition is correct or would you disagree I think that's two different things, Stefan. One thing is uh, evaluating uh, a future event negatively, right? You know, I know I have to go to the dentist on Thursday. I know it will probably hurt and I don't know how they will deal with that mask uh, thing and stuff. So I kind of expect the worst out of the future. That's one thing. But the other thing is, you know, I sit at home, I try to concentrate. The two girls are, are, are running in the house, they're throwing things over. My wife is screaming at them because they don't behave. So that's kind of, that's not a negative evaluation um, of a future situation. That's actually right now and I hate it. So that's a different kind of stress, right? Um, I would have a tendency to disagree. Because, you know, if you see the situation that you just described evolving, you might think that it might get even worse than what it is now. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the light of that, I had a really funny experience in one of the workshops that I gave around the topic because there was this guy who told me, listen, you're wrong. And I said, well, you know, I'm not saying too many times that I'm right, but you know, tell me the situation where you have a tendency to disagree. And he said, well, imagine, I mean, I'm uh, in Australia and I'm swimming at the shore and all of a sudden a shark is, is, is kind of uh, swimming directly towards me. Then I'm really stressed now. And I told him, yeah, you're absolutely right. But it's an event in the future that you give a negative evaluation. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, your assumption is that the shark is going to eat you up. 
and this has not yet happened. And if you know the behavior of sharks, you know, the risk that you're getting eaten, you know, is still quite, I think, I, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's two or three percent, you know, but it's still, there is a good chance that you can survive it. So why worry if he has not yet eaten you up? I mean, obviously, you know, I, I totally understand that in, in such a situation, if I would be in the situation, I probably would be stressed as well. But the stress is only due to the fact that we believe that something bad is gonna happen. Now, the question is, if we wanna reduce stress, and you know, if I'm giving these kind of presentations, and if I say there is one really important slide that you should remember, by the way, that's the one slide. Because if you're stressed in life, you should always ask yourself three questions. The first question is, what is the worst that can happen in the future situation? The second question is, how bad would it be if it truly happened, okay? And now coming back to the example of the shark, after answering the first two questions, you usually have drama. You have a lot of drama. So any guesses what the third question could be? I would um, ask myself, is there anything I can do to uh, do right now to avoid this situation happening? Okay. Any other ideas? The third one is, what is the probability in percent that it will happen? After question one and two, you have drama. And after question three, you usually, if you use that, you know, in times we're really stressed, if you use question three, it really puts things back into perspective. And I would like to go back to the example with the cinema. What is the worst that can happen, you know, in the, in the future situation in the cinema? What is the very worst that can happen? Francesco, you in the cinema, or oh, Paul, Paul, sorry, Paul. What is the worst that can happen? They could beat me up. They could beat you up. It can be even worse than that. Be a little bit creative. What could be the worst? They kill you. Yeah, maybe. That is really the worst. I mean, you're a big guy, you know, but those guys were big as well. So the worst that can happen in that situation is they are killing you. How bad would it be, Paul, if it truly happened that they would kill you? Probably quite bad, right? Yeah, it depends how many of them will be bad as well. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, I hear you, but uh, yeah. So, but the third question is, I mean, let's be clear, guys. You're in a cinema. In the cinema, there is probably some... Uh, cameras in there that, that capture the situation and, and capture what's going on in the cinema. So what is the probability in percent that it will happen? Give me a percentage. 0.5%. Yeah. So why the hell worry? Why the hell would we worry about something like that? Why the hell are we stressed in a situation like that? And Stefan, I would like to come back basically to the example that you mentioned at the beginning when you were saying about, you know, you're stressed if many things come at the same time. Do you have a very concrete um, situation that you could kind of share with us? Okay. Um, sorry, I was on mute. Um, well, you know, the, the the situation that I described before, um, I I'm I'm sitting in my home office and I'm trying to write and trying to concentrate and and you know the, there's construction work going on in the house next to ours and the two girls are running around and dropping something and 
my wife is screaming at them because they didn't pay attention also so you know that there's all this kind of um very turbulent surrounding and i'm sitting in the midst of that okay of that tornado <laughs> trying to concentrate right okay I, I totally understand i get it i can feel you yeah. so please answer the three questions okay what is the worst that can happen in that situation um um, the worst that could happen is that my my wife would lose her nerves totally, would pack up, walk <laughs> out of the door, go for a walk for an hour to, to relax, and two girls would be totally uncontrolled up there. So I would have to stop my work and have to go up there and take care of the situation until my wife is back. Yeah. So how bad would it be if it truly happened? Mm not really bad it would mean i would lose one and a half hour of my work i will probably have to do it tonight right yeah. because yeah not even question two is supporting the drama yeah you you figure it out right yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not supporting drama mm -hmm. and the, the third question is you know if if obviously if it would not yeah. be that bad even care. if the even mm -hmm. if the probability is a little bit higher you know you you basically you do not have to care right yeah yeah i don't care yeah exactly now if we switch that slide and those three questions to Corona, Chris, you answer the three questions when it comes to Corona. Yep. Um, what is the first thing that can happen? Well, related like Corona for me personally? Whatever. Okay, like personally, I could be infected and die. Exactly. How bad would that be? I mean, you're 30 years old, right? Yeah, so it's pretty bad. I'm like in a in a good good state of my life. So I would like to live a little bit longer. So it would be pretty bad. Okay. What is the probability that you die of Corona? Almost zero. Almost zero. You know, and this almost zero is actually valid for uh, most of the population out there, let's be clear. I mean, if you're older than 65 and if, if you have an unpleasant kind of uh, a negative uh, history in terms of things like diabetes, you know, like heart problems and so on, you obviously you might be at risk, you know, but you might be at exactly the same risk than if you would if you would catch any 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 kind of flu, you know, in that age, you know, with that uh, with, with with that history. So the thing is that, and don't get me wrong. Again, I take I take Corona very seriously. I have always stayed home. I'm not the one who says, you know, that the government in Switzerland has done a shitty job by lockdown and so on. But on the other hand, you know, Corona is not really that bad. And if I see somehow some people complaining about the fact and telling me that they're really stressed. And by the way, I had last week, you know, I had a workshop with my former employer at Dell. And they told me we are so stressed because we thought we could go back to the office on May 18. Now we know for sure it's going to be somewhere in June. So I said, hey, guys what's going on with you? You know, I mean, is that really such a big and huge problem? And in the light of that, you know, I have asked myself the question, what is the positive for me personally when it comes to Corona? And uh, the first two pictures that you see on top, they are related to cooking. And um, I have never cooked in my life before. And only due to Corona and due to the fact that I'm 50% on short work, I have started to cook. And what you see in the, in the middle, uh, on, in the top line, this is, and probably women will, will right away recognize it. What is it, Francesca? That's not called cooking if you use that thing. It's a <laughs> thermomix or whatever. That you have different types of that one. But yeah, it's just mixing up, mixing up stuff, and he will do the rest. <laughs> yeah, this is now very unpolite of you because I'm so proud about just everything honest. you know that I achieve. You know, with my thermomixer, 
and I only bought it three weeks ago and now you take all the joy away from me, you know? No, I have really my brother and my uncle using it and it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's a toy. It's good for the boys. It's, a <laughs> it's, it, it's fantastic. It's a good because, investment. <laughs> yeah, and it's even technology, you yeah. know? It's not only a cooking gear, there is a software included, you know, I, I honestly, I just love it. And <laughs> as I said, I only acquired it three weeks ago. It would never ever have happened without Corona. My wife loves it because I never cooked before. My kids love it, you know, because I'm really not famous for cooking. So that's, that's really positive about it. On the bottom left, uh, you see basically what Chris has mentioned before, you know, this is part of my backyard. And due to the fact that Corona came and that I have been working from home and that I have been on short work as well, I just had so much time, you know, to spend in my garden. So my garden looks like it has never ever looked before. It's just totally amazing. I have time, you know, to, to go for walks, you know, with our dog and with my wife. And you might wonder on the top right hand side what that is, you know, the dishwasher, right? Any guesses what happened to that dishwasher? The pump. The pump is stuck because... No. Could be, but it's not the case. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what happened. You know, my son, he will soon turn 18. And in the light of Corona, he thought that he wants to help as well in the household. You know, and what he did is he loaded the dishwasher which is something that he has never ever done before. And it only happened due to Corona because he was really bored. But what he did then is he, di he did not put in the tap into the dishwater, but this liquid thing, you know, that you use if you wash the things, you know, by hand. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is obviously there was plenty of foam, you know, and my wife was coming home from work very late. And she came to the kitchen and all this foam. And, you know, I cannot say that in English, I'm going to switch to German uh, very quickly, you know. Es hat so viel Schum gehabt. Und der Schum, wo aus der Wäschmaschine rausgekommen ist, ist aber nicht halb so viel gewesen wie der Schum, wo meine Frau vor dem Mund gehabt hat, wo sie gesehen hat, was aus der Wäschmaschine rausgekommen ist. Und da muss ich wirklich zugeben, dann hat die geschaumt wie blöd und mein Sohn ist so da gestanden, oder? Und ich bin da gestanden und ich habe einfach nur müssen grinsen und lachen. Ich habe gesagt, what the hell? You know, why are you angry with him? You know, he tried his very best due to Corona. He wanted to make himself, you know, helpful. You know, now he probably has heard his lesson. You know, he's not going to do that again. So this would not have happened, you know. Without, uh, without Corona. So to sum it up on Corona, you know, fear has two meanings and it's your decision. It's only our decision to what we stick. Do we stick to forget everything and run or do we stick to face everything and rise? It's only and exclusively our choice, you know? And you probably know this one, you know, glass is it half full or is it half empty? Exactly the same glass. It's just our decision what we see in the glass. So the question that I have for you guys is, is there anything positive to Corona to you? And if yes, what is it? One thing that was positive to me was that the kids stayed at home and I was at home too, so I could take care of their homeschooling, which was fun. And, uh, uh, you know, I had, I had to learn that stuff again and we did all those exercises together. And then, you know, in vacation, we started programming a robot together because vacation was canceled. So that was, that was fun. It was, I think it was a good experience because I'm usually absent from home. And so, you know, to get a, a little bit of bonding with, with my daughters. Mm. Thank you. Any other positive experiences?
Well, you know, I can I can take it from from here. Just saying that I'm I'm pretty sure that without Corona, we wouldn't be talking right now because without Corona, I wouldn't have started the whole thing that I started. So we are ten people in here. So basically, we are ten people listening to Stefan because of Corona. So for me, that's something positive. So everything that I started now with with all out and, and the and the all online thing, um, sports and, and also the whole webinar thing, it basically all happened because of Corona. I don't think that that ever would have happened without Corona. I'm totally sure it wouldn't because um, I mean, probably it's fair to say and to admit Chris, that we, we did have the idea, you know, for this session. When, when did we finalize it with the date of today? I think it was two or three days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, you just have more time due to Corona. And I have to say that um, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, kind of stress, you know, in my own personal private life, you know, has so massively decreased, you know, you don't have to care about, you know, when are you going to meet with whom, you know, it's just you usually home at night. And this is probably as well one of the reasons why you made it possible to basically to join that presentation. If in normal times, you, Chris and myself, we had, would have spoken two days ago and would have said, well, let's make a, a webinar uh, in, in two days time. This would never, ever have happened, right? Mm, yeah, I think so too. Good. So then I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. And, and this is, by the way, this is my own definition of stress. And uh, here I like, again, if people disagree with me, stress is my own inability to deal with a personally difficult situation in an appropriate way. This, Stefan Züger, is not about your wife. This is not about your kids. This is just the question on how you react to such a situation. And I'm probably not telling you guys secrets if I say that at least myself, I have seen myself reacting in very comparable situations, so totally different. And I always had a tendency to find people where I could say it was their mistake that I reacted as I reacted. But if I'm truly honest, 100% with myself, I need to admit that the problem, it's only me. But the issue is that if you're stressed, you have two different options to say who is responsible for your stress. What are the two options? Option one is the others, the company, my wife, my boss, you know. Um, or I just say, well, it's probably myself. I'm